Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. In today's video, we're going to be using scrap wood along with stamps, stencils, and watercolors to create some beautiful fall signs. We're also going to be using fabrics to create the cutest fabric apples. We'll also be using mason jar rings to create some faux baked pies. Well, there is lots of cuteness in store today, so let's go ahead and get these projects started. To begin with, I'm going to be painting my pieces in the Rust-Oleum Linen White. This is just a nice soft white that I think goes well with most of my craft projects. And now that both of my boards are nice and dry, I want to go ahead and start with the smaller one here. I've got some really cute stencils. These are the silk screen kind. I've never used these before, so I want to use this today. And then these I picked up from Hobby Lobby, and I want to use the honeycomb. And I am hoping that I've got enough room to stamp the word honey using my Iron Orchid designs in typesetting. So we'll just see. This is absolutely one of my most favorite stamp sets to use because you have the uppercase alphabet. You've also got the lowercase alphabet and your numbers as well. I just love it. It's so versatile. So I'm going to pull out the letters to spell honey and hopefully I've got enough room on my board. Well, it may hang off the edge a little bit, but I think that is going to look really cute. And now I'm going to be taking my Iron Orchid Designs Thin Set. I love this. It's nice and flexible and it has the grid line so you can just line everything up. So then when I pull it up, it has all of my letters stuck on there and I'm using the Iron Orchid Designs in black. Now I can hover over and then press it down and walk my fingers over each of the letters and you want to give it a little bit of pressure but not so much that you distort your letters. How cute is that? While this is drying, I'm gonna take a baby wipe and just wipe the ink off of the surface of my stamps. And then I always rinse them off with just a little bit of warm water. These are really, really cute. I am gonna go ahead and cut these apart. I think I like this one. And it's nice that you can see through these. So now I'm gonna take some blue painter's tape and tape around there so I don't get any of that design. I only want my little B. And I'm gonna use the Apple Barrel in black, and this is the matte acrylic. I'm gonna put just a little bit at the top right there, and then I'll take my foam brush and just rub that in. Okay, remove my painter's tape. Oh goodness, I like it. So now I wanna use this stencil. And I'm going to use the Folk Art in pure gold. Let's see where I want some honeycomb on there. Maybe a little bit right there. Don't want to get that on our bee. I like that. I'm notorious for not doing well with stencils. Just going to tape off that area. I thought it looked a little bare right in here, so I lightly went over it with my brush with just what was left on the brush. Ah, that is just the cutest. Well, now let's move on to our bigger board. I'm going to be using the Iron Orchid Designs Fruitful Harvest. I love this set. It has all of these gorgeous pumpkins and leaves, but the one I'm gonna be using is the second sheet. And this is actually what we're gonna be stamping and watercoloring as well. So I'm just gonna play around with how I want my design to lay. And I'm gonna see if we can get the word apples on there. So I have it laid out like I like it. And I'm gonna put one of these lines here along the base of my board and press these letters on. Remove my excess ink from around my letters. And now since I have them lined up there, when I line that up, it's gonna be even. Now I just lay it over and I can press all of those letters down. And now I can take my I and my E to fill in over here. I'm gonna take my letter J and use just the top of the J and press between that. 
Pies and cider, how cute. So I've got this laid out. I actually use the letter B as a spacer because it's almost the same size as the P. Take my grid and squish all of my letters down. And I'm gonna let this dry before I attempt to put the other P on there because I don't wanna smear my ink. And that is turning out so, so cute. This one is big enough that I can manipulate it by hand without having to use a thin mount. And then I want this side on this corner. I'm gonna take the leaves. Maybe put some leaves right there. Maybe a little leaf right here and right there. And that's what we have so far. That is so cute. And then once all of our ink dries, we'll start coming back in with our watercolors. And now I've got some water, different types of brushes, and a watercolor kit that I literally picked up in the kids section at Walmart. I'm going to start with a brown. And then these are my stems right here. And you see, I can just paint right over where I've stamped. Because it's dry, it's not going to smear that ink. Channeling our inner Bob Ross and painting happy little apples. For the leaves, I'm gonna start in with this color right here. Just kind of brush it down the middle. I think I'm gonna combine these two. I have these brush markers, and they're also water-based. Now my brush markers are giving a more intense color, but I can take a wet brush and just kind of thin that out. Let me do some apples. I want to put some yellow around here. I think I'll use this one for the apples, the red. I just love stamping and painting these. They just add so much character when you shade those in with just a cute little watercolor set from Walmart. Well, I'm going to go off camera and just finish painting my leaves and my apples, and then we'll come back and move on to our next project. For our next project, we're getting ready to make these little cuties right here. Is that not the cutest little stuffed apple you've ever seen? I can't wait to show you how to make these. But I also wanted to show you how my sign turned out after everything dried. Isn't that just gorgeous? I love those Iron Orchid Design stamps. They just make everything look so good. So let's get started on these apples. I'll link below where I got my little pattern from, but honestly, this is so easy. You could just make this design yourself. And so we are going to be cutting six of these, and I picked up all of these fabrics at Hobby Lobby. So first, we'll need to cut out our pattern pieces. I just fold it over so I've got three pieces, pin it to my fabric, and cut it out. So as I was cutting them out, I decided I wanted two more with the mixed fabric, and then I'm going to do a couple of apples just in the ticking stripe alone. I just think that is so cute. And to assemble your apples, you're going to put your right sides together and pin that into place. And now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and stitch a quarter inch away from the edge from tip to tip on the side here. So you can see I have it stitched there just like that. And then I'm going to come over here and put another one right sides together. And then I'm gonna pin that in place and stitch that as well. So I continued around the entire shape, just adding those pieces in, putting the right sides together. Now for the final piece where I am going to be joining both of these sides together, I want to leave an opening so I can get the stuffing in there. So I'm gonna leave this area open and stitch from here down to the corner 
and from here up to this corner. And that is going to totally join our little apple fabric pieces together. Now that we have all of those pieces stitched in, before we turn it, we're going to do little snips all the way around on each one of our seams because then when we turn it right side out, that's going to allow that seam to lie flat and give us what we want here without any bulkiness. Do not clip where you're going to turn it. That needs to be the full seam allowance there. So everything else will be clipped. So now that we have all of our seams nicely clipped, we're going to turn it right side out. And now I'm going to take my fingernail and gently run it along the seam just to kind of give that a finger press so the seam is going to lie flat. So just take a second and run your finger all down each of your seams. And now get some polyfill and begin stuffing your apple. And there we go. I like mine to be pretty stuffed where it almost looks like a cute little shabby chic baseball. Now we're gonna take needle and thread and we're just going to hand stitch this opening right here closed. And we're just going to pick up a little bit of fabric on each side, just a teeny little bit, and do our overhand stitch and stitch it closed. And there it is, all stitched up together. And now I'm going to take my hands and work the fiber fill more evenly into our little apple here. And then we'll put the stitching in to give it that little apple appearance. I used regular thread to stitch my little apple closed. However, I'm going to be using embroidery floss. You want to use something heavy duty to be able to go in and out of your apple. Regular thread is not going to be strong enough at the bottom little bit of your fabric into your needle and bring it back through then you'll go from the bottom out through the top and that's why i like using a long darning needle about a quarter inch away put your needle back down into your apple and back out through the bottom and then you're going to do that again and then your last time, you're going to bring it through back to the bottom, and then you're gonna tie it off. And that is our nice, cute little fluffy apple shape. And now grab yourself some cinnamon sticks. I've already clipped this one in half because I've used it over here, but I just used some snippers just to cut that. Regular scissors just wasn't strong enough to actually go through the cinnamon stick. So I'm gonna put a little dollop of glue in the middle there. And then I'm going to press and hold my cinnamon stick until that sets. And I am using felt for the leaves. And I actually took embroidery thread and stitched some detail in there, which I think is really cute. And you can do that or you can leave it just as it is. This came with a pattern for a leaf, but I thought that was a little too big. I just made one smaller and I feel this is more proportionate. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue at the bottom and then hold that until that sets and then you place your leaf where you like it and you're going to glue that into place and there we go how cute is that oh my gosh i just love these well i'm going to go off camera and finish the rest of these and we'll go ahead and move on to our last project well, now that I have a whole bushel of my cute little fabric apples completed, we're going to move on to our little faux pies. And look how stinking cute these are. I've done them two different ways, and I'll go over each way, and you can decide how you want to do yours. But the base of the pie itself starts off in the same fashion. So you'll need a wide mouth mason jar. The regular is much, much smaller than the wide mouth, and this is the one that you want. So the first thing you're going to do, run glue on the inside there, and you're going to glue that down to your ring. Hold that in there until it sets, just to make sure it's got good adhesion all the way around. 
Okay, we're going to set this aside for just a second. Next, you're going to need some cardstock and you want something that is about four inches in diameter because you need it to be a little larger than your mason jar lid. Trace out something that is at least four inches and then you're going to cut that out. Once you have your cardstock circle cut out, you're going to lay it on some caramel colored felt and you want to cut around it but leave a little bit of a seam allowance just like that. Now that both of your pieces are cut out, you're going to take your cardstock circle and you are going to be gluing that down to your mason jar ring just like this. So I'm going to run some glue along the edge of my ring and then I'm going to place it down on my paper. Center it up as best you can. That way you've got a little lip. That's going to be what we make our pie crust out of. I'm going to come back with my glue gun and I am going to run a ring all around the outside because some areas didn't set up as well as others. You want to make sure that that is really adhered well to the top of your ring. Take some fiber fill and you're going to roll it in your hands. You want to kind of compress that. So we're kind of flattening it out and making it into a circle shape. You're going to take that and place it on top of your circle. And you do want to put some glue down in the middle just to kind of hold it in place while you're trying to work with it. Now you take your felt. You're going to place that over the top. Center up my felt as best I can. Tuck in your fiber fill. Put your glue on the edge and press down your felt. And you're going to do that all the way around your circle. And it's bunched up a little, but that doesn't matter because our crust is going to be covering that up. And I did not do a good job of centering up all of that, but it doesn't matter because now we're going to trim off the excess. Now I'm going to show you two different ways to do your pie crust and we're using cotton muslin. This is natural cotton muslin that I actually coffee dyed. This pie crust is just snipped and ripped pieces of your muslin fabric and then for this pie crust I made little pleats and glued each one of those little pleats down. I'll show you how we get the cinnamon and all of that on there in just a moment. For this little pie crust, I used pinking shears to cut my little strips here for my crust. And then I took a long piece of muslin fabric and I just did a running stitch through the fabric and gathered that. To save time, I'm just going to do the snipped and ripped. But you most certainly can do the pinking shears and the stitched ruffle. It is totally up to you. Now we're going to do some snips here. And you don't want to make it too wide. I'm making it a little less than half an inch wide. You don't want it too wide because then it covers up too much of your little pie. And then we're going to remove the excess string from our strip here. We're going to lay out our pattern first. Then we'll come back and interweave our little lattice pattern. But for right now, we just want to cut our pieces. All right, so I've got my pieces on there. Now I'm just going to take a second to lay out my lattice. And then we'll come back and we'll get everything glued down. And now that we have all of our little woven pieces of our pastry on there, you're just going to lift up the pieces and tack them into place. And for the pieces that are on the edge, you're going to take that all the way down to the edge. And then just put just a tack of glue to hold that on top of that one. So you're going to keep lifting and tacking until you've got all of your pieces tacked into place. We're going to once again trim off the excess. And now for our outer crust here, we're going to once again snip and rip another piece of our muslin. 
So this one is 3 quarters of an inch. And again, take a second to remove all of your excess threads. And now to make our crust, the middle of your strip here is going to be on the edge right there. I'm going to start with just a little bit of glue. And I'm going to hold that there just to get it started. And then all you're going to do is make a little pleat, tack it down, make another pleat, tack it down, and then tack it to itself. Make a pleat, tack it to your pie, and then a little there to tack it to itself. And then we can come back and add more glue to tack that down later. You're just simply going to make a little pleat and glue all the way around your pie. And if your strip isn't long enough, we'll just simply work in another strip. So I'm going to go off camera and finish my little ruffle here around my pie. And then I will show you how to get this effect on your pie and we'll make our cute little apple tag as well. To achieve this little look right here, I do this technique outside because it is a little messy. First, I spray it with some spray adhesive and then I lightly sprinkle over the ground cinnamon and then dust off the excess. I go back over it with just a little bit of the Krylon Glitter Blast in Diamond Dust and it gives it a nice little sparkle that looks like sugar. I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but it really is a cute little effect. So I'm going to go outside and add my cinnamon to these and then we'll come back and make our cute little apple tags. And to make the tag, as I've done here, you'll need a strip of the red ticking, or you can use any other fabric that you choose, and also a strip of your muslin. I'm using a clickable alphabet. I'm using the B as a placeholder, but I took the letter off. And I'm also using black ink. Just put a little bit of ink, stamp close to the end, in the middle. And you can see that saves a place for my other P. Now I'm going to take the A off because I don't need that to be inked again. Put the P right there by the A. Ink that up. So then when I hover it over, it's in the right spot. They don't sell this exact set on Amazon anymore, but you can find something similar if you just do a search for clickable alphabet stamps and you'll find something that you can use. I'm going to put my stamps back together so I don't lose these little pieces and they just slide right back in. Now you're going to take your little ticking stripe or whatever fabric you choose to use and you're just going to fold it so it makes a little banner and you're going to do the same thing with your apple. So you got it just like that. Then I've got some embroidery floss and I'm going to come up from the back before I stitch it on to the pie because I want to hide the knot. I'm going to come right back down next to it. Then you decide where you want it. And you just pick up a little fabric just like that. And then you're going to come back up through your little tag again close to where those other stitches are when you come back through it's when it'll actually secure it to your pie. And you could hot glue it on but I think it just looks cuter stitched. Bring it back through and we're going to pick up a little fabric again. Make sure it's secure and it is. So now you can just make your little knot and tie it off and all of your knots are hidden underneath in the back. And you want to make sure you hold your fingers right here. You don't want to push on the inside of that. You don't want to pop that through. Clip these. So now all I need to do is give you a closer look at all of this week's projects so you can see just how adorable everything turned out.
Thank you so much for joining me today. It has been my absolute pleasure to craft with you. Let me know in the comments if you plan on making any of these little cutie patooties. I tell you that more fake food is in our future because I had so much fun making them. Please subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until next time my sweet friends, be blessed.